So we've looked at superficial and we've started looking at partial thickness burns and we've just looked at shallow partial thickness burns. Now we want to look at deep partial thickness or second degree burns. And these are burns that are going to go deep into the dermis. So they are deep dermal burns. deep dermal. They're still partial thickness but they're deep partial thickness burns. Now to orientate ourselves as usual for these deep dermal partial thickness burns we need to think about the skin. So here we have the surface of the skin, the epidermis And the dermis below, dermis, epidermis, I'm sure you're getting the hang of this by now. Now, deep dermal burns, deep partial thickness burns, they're partial thickness because part of the skin is going to be burnt away. But these are deep dermal. So the superficial burns were affecting the epidermis. The shallow dermal, still partial, these are partial thickness, but they were just affecting the upper part. They were burning down to the upper part of the dermis. But the deep dermal are going to be much deeper burns, going deep into the dermis. So all this is lost. They're not quite going all the way through, so we can st see there's still some dermis left here. Still some left, but, but not a lot. A lot of it's been burnt away. So how are we going to recognise these? Well, in the deep dermal burns, there's still going to be swelling and fluid loss because there's going to be some preserved vasculature deep down in the lower parts of the dermis. So there might be a few small capillaries left down here. And a lot have been burnt away, but there's going to be some left. So we can still get the swelling of the inflammatory exudates and the fluid loss. Now appearance wise these can be red but often often they're white in colour and the reason for that is all this tissue on top has been burnt. This is all now dead and devascularized. And the devascularized tissue often appears white. Later on it can go black, it can necrose, but often in the early stages we see a, a whitish colour to the wound. Although it still can be red because remember there's still the opportunity for some inflammatory reaction from vasculature deeper down in the dermis. Very often these have a, a, a wet or a, a waxy dry appearance. So these wounds are typically not as wet as the shallow dermal because of course in the shallow dermal there's a lot of vasculature left. But in the deeper dermal, less vac vasculature left. And very often we get this uh, waxy, white, waxy, dry looking appearance. And given that a lot of the blood vessels have been damaged, we're going to get reduced or absent blanching. So the blanching effect is going to be reduced. And the reason for that is the blood vessels here, which would have blanched normally, blood vessels that should be here, of course, are just burnt away. They're no longer there. And the only ones left to blanch are the small limited number that are left deep in the dermis. So you get progressively less blanching as you burn away more of the dermis because you're burning away more of the blood vessels. And these burns are often less painful, often less painful in the area of the burn. 
So again, if we think of the um, think of the skin here, the epidermis, the dermis, we know that the nociceptors are spread throughout the dermis. Then many of them are simply burnt away. Simply burnt away. So there's less nociceptors to perceive the pain. So the pain is often less in the deep dermal compared to the shallow dermal burns. But what we have in the skin, in the deeper layers of the skin, I should maybe show you on, on this diagram here, this one from the pathophysiology book. Um, on the deeper layers of the skin, we have pressure receptors, pressure receptors. And we see the nociceptors can be higher up. So what happens is if you prick this with a sharp object, like a hypodermic needle, you prick the wound. Uh, the, instead of feeling pain, as you would if these nociceptors were intact, the patient experiences a feeling of pressure. So you can stab them with something sharp and they can have a feeling of pressure rather than a feeling of sharpness because these are the only peripheral sensory receptors generating tactility that may be left. So often less painful with a feeling of pressure rather than pain. Now healing in these wounds, there's a lot of tissue been lost so healing is often more than 21 days, it can take a long time to heal. Now the healing often takes place from uh, fibroblast cells which are found, found throughout the dermis. But of course a lot of dermis is lost, so there's less fibroblast cells left to facilitate healing because it's the fibroblast cells that produce the fibrous tissue to regenerate the dermis. It's the fibroblast cells that produce the collagen to give the tensile strength to the dermis. So you're starting from a low base, a low cell population, so healing is going to take longer. And as well as that, there's a much greater thickness of skin that requires healing. So it's going to take more time. Healing often occurs by uh, granulation, the development of granulation tissue. Now we've looked at this in great detail if you want to look at the series on um, wound healing. Campbell teaching series on wound healing. But the fibrosis, the healing by fibrosis, remember if we can't heal by regeneration, if the tissues are so badly damaged that there's not much left there to regenerate by mitotic regeneration, then we're left to healing by fibrosis, collagen scar tissue, and, and the fibrosis leads to scar tissue. And this leads to poorer cosmetic and functional results. So these, bone, these bones are more likely to heal with scar tissue formation. And as in all burns, as we've said, infection is common, but infection is particularly a problem with deep dermal partial thickness injuries. These burns are likely to get infected. That's going to further delay wound healing, can actually increase the size of the wound and make no mistake, there is a risk of sepsis. Systemic sepsis is a risk with burn injuries and people can die from it, of course. So very often what we do in plastics units or burns units is uh, skin grafting, split skin grafting. So in a split skin graft, healthy skin will be shaved off from a part of the body. Split, split skin graft, splitting the dermis. This top part will be taken and grafted onto the damaged burn. And very often you get very good results with this as long as the, as long as the uh, recipient area is, is well prepared. So, 
swelling and fluid loss, red or white, sometimes uh, sometimes wet but can be a dry waxy appearance, reduced or absent uh, blanching, often less painful, feeling of pressure very often because of the preserved pressure receptors deeper down in the skin when the dermal nociceptors have been burnt away. Healing can be very problematic, they need a lot of intervention, a lot of uh, measures to prevent infection. Granulation tissue would want to promote, fibrosis is a problem resulting in scar formation and the omnipresent risk of uh, infection with can't really stress this enough, there's a risk of sepsis. Burns can kill you, make no mistake. And often in special units these will be treated with a split skin grafting.